For this video, we're going to really focus on helping you understand the resistivity equation. We're going to practice using it in the calculation. We're going to look at how it can be affected if area and volume are affected. And also a six mark question just detailing how you'd find experimentally. So the equation that's given to you in an exam is resistivity is the resistance of a material multiplied by the cross-sectional area over the length of the material. Now, if you have a wire, it won't specify, but if you cut a wire open, you'll see that the cross-section is actually just a circle. So the cross-sectional area is pi r squared. Okay, so what it's asking for here actually is the resistance. So if we multiply both sides by L and divide both sides by A, we get that the resistance is rho L over A. Now rho stands for resistivity, which is the value of 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8. Sorry, it's very small there. 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8. By small, I meant the power, by the way. Um, you multiply that by the length of 1.4 meters, and you divide all of that by the cross-sectional area, which is a value of 7.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Actually, I'm just going to see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, hopefully that helps. So that's an area of 7.8 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 7. You put all of that into your calculator, which I'll just very quickly do. So we have 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 8 multiplied by 1.4, all divided by 7.8 times 10 to the power of minus 7. And all of that is equal to 0 0.0305. Let's write that out, 0 0.0305 ohms. It now tells you the wire is stretched to twice its original length by a process that keeps its volume constant. If the resistivity of the metal wire remains constant, show that the resistance increases to 4R. So we're going to use this equation here, R equals rho L over A. It tells you that the resistance is what stays constant. It tells you the length is doubled, so L becomes 2L. Um, but then it wants you to show that the resistance increases to 4R. Well, how can that happen if the resistance is constant? So resistivity is constant? Well, it happens if the area itself changes. So let's think about it. If we double the length, but the volume is constant, how does that affect the area? The trick here is realizing that the volume of any 3D shape is just a cross-sectional area times the length. In order for the volume to be constant, that means that the area times length before the wire is stretched is equal to the area times length after the wire is stretched. So we can say that the area before times the length before, A1, L1, is equal to, um, well, the length afterwards is twice the original length, so 2 L2. In that case, the area um, must be, sorry, 2 L1, because it's twice the length of L1. In that case, the area of the second wire has to be half the area of the first wire in order for the twos to cancel out and for them to multiply to each other. So that means that the area itself is actually halved. Now, because... Let's separate this actually. So we have rho times 2L all over a half A. Well, 2 divided by a half is just 4, isn't it? So we can write this as 4 times rho L over A. And then we can replace rho L over A with resistance. And we can say that the resistance becomes 4 times the amount when the length is doubled. And that's because doubling the length halves the area in order to maintain a constant volume. It's quite a difficult question there. And just to finish off today, uh, let's have a look at the six mark question. So I'm going to put, actually, before I even put a text box, let's have a look. So it says that described in part A, but you don't really need that part of the question. We want to describe how you'd use a voltmeter, ammeter, and equipment to measure the resistivity. So we mentioned resistivity is Ra over L. Let's go through each of these individual components and how we can measure them. Now, for the length of a wire, it's best to honestly just use a meter ruler because it has a high enough resolution. However, um, it's not really useful in measuring the cross-sectional area, a ruler that is, because the area is pi r squared. A ruler does not have enough high enough resolution to measure the radius of a material. Because the radius is so small, you won't be able to tell like little differences in millimeters using just a meter ruler. So what can we use? What high resolution equipment is best? It's actually something called a micrometer. It can measure very small distances. And actually, we don't use it to measure radius. We use it to measure the diameter. Once you've got the diameter, you can halve it and use it as the radius. So let's make a note of that. That you want to halve it for radius. That's that dealt with. How about resistance? Well, that's where the labeled circuit diagram comes in. Because um, what we can do is 
we can have the putty. Um, let's just say this is the putty. We connect an ammeter. We connect a voltmeter parallel to the putty. We measure the voltage against current. So let's do the rest of this in text. Measure voltage against current. Oh, but you'd also want to measure it at various different values. So you might want to also put a variable resistor in. That What that will do, you can change the resistance. And actually, no, you don't even need to do that. Once you measure the voltage and current, um, what you want to say is that you want to repeat the experiment and calculate mean values. Um, once you've got mean values of uh, voltage against current, there's an equation that links resistance to voltage against current. I'm sure you guys know it. It's resistance equals voltage over current. You can take the mean voltage and divide it by the mean current, and that will give you an accurate representation of the resistance. You then multiply that onto pi r squared all over length, and that gives you the resistivity. I'm just going to quickly look at the bullet points to see if we missed anything. Details of the measurements you'd make. You know, we've mentioned that. And the kind of how you'd use the measurements. Yeah, we've talked about that, all these equations. How to improve the precision. Yeah, repeat the experiment. That's everything that you'd mentioned for that question, actually. Hopefully this made sense and it's cleared up a lot of things about resistivity. These are just a few questions that I know has come up quite commonly in exams, actually. Thanks for watching.